Hi, I'm Andrew Cartwright. And Anna. This is the a a Show. We've invited our friends on Facebook because we wanted to share uh, this experience. Oh, look at facial recognition, me too. They got facial recognition on these cameras. Pretty so nice. one of the topics we're going to cover today is cheating. So um, we're going to be looking at some of the questions that you guys pop up in regards to cheating so that we can share it um, on the show, the a a show. So today, this is, this is Anya's, um, she picked this one. Uh, mm. I didn't pick this one. But we're gonna go deep and honest and real into the subject of cheating. That is what you picked, right? Yeah, yeah, I think they're both okay. like, I kind of, we learned, we, um, we were reading some material yesterday, right, about yeah. cheating and uh, Actually, more people cheating emotionally than physically, right? So emotional cheating, I think, is, it was uh, over 45% of people that was surveyed from yeah. a big group of almost 3,000. Uh, they admitted there were some point in the relationship they were cheating emotionally. So what is yeah. emotional cheating? Um, you know, I, I think uh, in regards to cheating, well, what's interesting is I've been cheated on. Mm-hmm. I've cheated, mm-hmm. right? Um, I remember in... When I was a kid and I was, I was crazy, uh, like 20, 19 years old, um, I had quite a few, um, quite a few girls and uh, I was lying to them and cheating on them. So it was, I, yeah. but what was funny is if you talk to me at the time, I, I don't think you realize what cheating's like until you've been cheated on. Right. That, that's when I think um, for me, I really felt what it's like to be on the other side of being cheated on. So, I mean, I, I don't think for me personally, I, um, I didn't really experience how horrific it was mm-hmm. uh, to be cheated on. I mean, until I got cheated on. And yeah. I, I would say I, I did a human growth, um, like a human um, course, that the development. Uh, development course, human development course. And I was 21 years old and I got on stage in front of 350 people. And I told them what I was doing at the time. I was mm-hmm. seeing about six different people, mm-hmm. six different women. I, was, I grew up in the Bay Area, so I don't want to say people. I want to say women, right? I'm a flaming heterosexual. So, um, yeah, I, was, I told everybody. And after getting on stage and telling 350 people, uh, half of them being women, they came up and they gave me a piece of their mind. And... The guys shied away and, and didn't talk to me, and the women, one by one, came up and sort of read me the riot act about wow about cheating. And you know? that was very rightful of them, right? Well, I, I think it was, you know, I got a chance to really hear from lots of different women. It was great because they communicated what it was like to be on the other side of that. I hadn't right. really, I didn't think I was doing anybody any harm because everyone I was seeing was seemed to be happy, right, in the bubble that was created. But there was a lies. I mean, was there, a there was a lies lie. going around, and uh, then you kind of start losing yourself and what's real, what's not real, what's, you know, what's lie, what's true. And I think when the boundaries are start getting be so blurry, then you yeah. start, you know, recognizing that this is what you're doing is not really right or fair with anyone. Yeah. Right? Yeah, completely. So emotional cheating. So I asked that question. What is emotional cheating for you? Emotionally it's, cheating. I think it's when you know. I think when, emotionally cheating. And what the funny thing is, I never even thought about what emotional cheating was until nine years ago. Right. Um, when Anya actually brought it to my attention and said that you know cheating just isn't physical. It's also emotional as well. And I hadn't noticed that before. But there was connections I was having with people. I think when you connect with people on, a, on an emotional level and have emotional intimacy with right. them, and then afterwards you start to think about them right. in an emotional way, then, then you're emotionally cheating. And I, think, um, I don't think people realize it as much. That about it because you know you have your so what is emotionally I mean so just kind of let's go give the people example because I thought it was interesting the statistic we listened yesterday the almost mm-hmm. 50 
people somewhere down the road emotionally yeah. cheating, not necessarily physically cheating, but emotionally, which is we really fantasize about other people, right? If you fantasize about, you know, getting together or in some way or shape or form with other people, that's called emotional cheating, right? Yeah. And if you think you think in some way intimate um, about other people while you are in a relationship, so intimate things that kind of reserve only exclusively for relationship and you think uh, or fantasize about other people, that's when emotional cheating comes to play. Yeah. And this is kind of, I think it's the, um, how would say, it's kind of preludium, like, you know, pre, before before the storm before i think next when the other person we we think about or fantasize about and make some moves towards you that's when the physical cheating kind of comes to place right yeah, yeah i think um i think the difference uh difference for for me as far as understanding that is when you commit the idea of the word commitment right, right. is like you shut any other doors down you close anything off it's like when you know people go to the island to take over the island they burn the ships right there is no turning back right um and i think when you when you commit and that's really i think in a in a relationship is that sense of commitment then you you know when you're if you're still emotionally thinking about somebody else mm -hmm. I, I don't think you love the person that you're with I, right. i'm just being honest if you think about other people or you emotionally um experiencing the need to be with other people then you probably need to be with the other people yeah right? absolutely I, and, and I, I think when um i think when the relationship start it's kind of you know it's hard to say when the relationship starting and become serious and but i think when you get your mind straight when you are in a serious committed relationship then it's just yeah that's you know it's a one-on-one -on -one relationship right with the other people in play or yeah. games or in your mind and and it takes um, uh, I would say integrity and a little maybe discipline to kind of go ahead and um, you know do that right D discipline for what discipline I think like a mental discipline because especially when you're like in your relationship and it's one point you declare like you are in a serious relationship and you might have some other people from the past coming and send you, you know, text messages or um, emails or whatever, DMs on your social media, you're still getting maybe triggered to yeah. think about those people, right? Well, I, I just yeah. have to say she might be disciplined because of yeah. all the interaction she's maybe getting. But for me, it takes no discipline to, yeah. to stay emotionally, um, you know, connected to you and disconnected oh, from other people. It's amazing. Yeah, I don't yeah. I don't you know, there's to me there's no discipline at all. It's easy. I don't think about other people. Yeah. I don't feel uh, connected to wanting to be with other people. So I interesting the statistic about last night what was mm -hmm. what we watched that majority of people so there will be cheating is actually that are financially dependent. And that's a touchy feeling topic, you know, because oh, yeah, I thought yeah. I thought like, okay, if you financially dependent on your spouse or your know, significant other boyfriend or whatever, you might be like coy and kind of stay put because you don't want to rock the boat, you don't want to use you know lose security, right? But you had an interesting point about that. Totally yeah, the opposite. The statistic was it was much higher that people that were financially dependent on their spouse had a higher likelihood, and it was much higher, like 40% higher, that they would fool around. And, you know, if they're searching for security, they, you know, in my mind, I think they need to make sure that, um, or the thought is, if the, per if the relationship doesn't work out they're in, they better have insurance or backup. Yeah. And uh, if somebody's dependent on somebody taking care of them, uh, the likelihood that the relationship, something happens to it, every time they experience some sort of fear or insecurity mm -hmm. or thought that the relationship won't be there, I think they'll reach out and make sure they are connected to the possible. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Actually, more men that are financially dependent, the more likely will be cheating. And I think it's staggering to like, 80% or something, all of them, they're more likely to be cheating. So, so this is a statistic. Uh, not the ladies. I think ladies was much smaller statistic, yeah. but 
But men who are financially dependent, they're like um, slam dunk. They're gonna be cheating. Okay, so she really enjoyed that statistic. <laughs> I know. So you know, yeah. she was all over the men. You know, hitting about how they're fooling around on women taking care of them. You know, uh, so is that right, ladies? Yes. Uh, I mean, yeah. So uh, yeah. That's pretty but, crazy. <laughs> it is crazy, but that's, that's my statistics. I mean, we just quote the statistics. And I think it's a, it's a danger to really be, and I'm like, you know, I'm ruling for women that, you know, they want to be financially independent or some point or, you know, whatever they do, even if their spouse will take care of them and the kids and their household and they just don't have to work. Like this, you always should have some, even like a, some side hustle, you know, some money making on the side, which oh, that sorry. could be. In investments and you know like, so not uh, side hookup like not no. side hookup but side hustle <laughs> yeah. side hustle which it could be just the investments that if you have your investment account you know your own investment account and you just invest in whatever it is could be equity bonds you know real estate multiple other stuff you could use professional help to help you with the investment or you can just do on your own you know in smaller scale or just learn and educate yourself so you can invest on your own so another statistic let's let's yeah. let's focus on it uh -huh. about was that um actually 95 percent of people they were thinking there's no way their spouse a significant other is cheating on them only five percent people they thought they were suspicious that something is going on so it's just amazing and you know and the statistics actually how many people are cheating it's like uh it tells really how many people are living in the dark and they don't even want to think about it that their significant other can cheat on them right well there's two ways i i look at that um honestly i don't i don't think about you cheating on me mm -hmm. right um first of all i don't want to have that in my universe right i don't want that in my thought patterns and if it comes to be that somehow I find out you're cheating on me, well, then I'll confront that and handle it at that time. But in the meantime, I'm not going to drive myself crazy. And honestly, if I have to think about you cheating on all the time, mm -hmm. then I, I probably have my own insecurities right. or I'm probably projecting those on you or we have a problem in the so, relationship. Well, so, who right? are the, so who are the cheaters? I think because... That's good to find because the cheaters are really people that are insecure about all their own stuff. And each one of us, they have insecurities, including me, including you. And uh, we all have, you know, some stuff going on that we're not certain about it, about our oh, body. Oh, you want, you want to go into reasons? And think about it. But let's go to reasons. So I think it's okay, because I, what, the, what, why men cheat? And I would tell why women, I think, well, it's, cheat. It's not just one category. So yeah. I'll, I think I can go into quite a few reasons both that i've observed and i've experienced one is the sense of significance feeling important mm -hmm. feeling like you're desired um wanted wanted and uh that that can be uh, one aspect okay so we have number one what's number two there's there's tons i'll give oh, you tons of just them. give it tons. Okay, okay so the other one is variety the idea that you have different conversations different interactions with people um that you have a sense of new and a sense of adventure with each new person you go to. Different maybe type of sex, like, you know, whips They're, and chains no, and, nobody you has, know, it's like... Nobody yeah. has sex the same, I'll tell you that from experience. Whips and chains. Everybody's different in, their, in the bedroom, almost everyone is okay. different, unique. Um, then you have um, the sense of validation, like getting approval from someone who is, you know, approving of you. Um, the other could be that you feel that you have more security mm. because you have multiple people that you could be with. Um, it could be the sense that you feel alone. You're, try you're trying desperately to feel connected and because you never really feel connected because you really don't have an authentic relationship. We have a good message. We have read a message. Up, read up, up and then you finish. Once you've been cheated on, this is from Doug by the way. Thanks Doug for contributing. Um, once you've been cheated on, how do you build trust again? Not only from cheating, but a bad relationship involving lying. Ooh. 
Yeah. Ooh, that, oh man, that, that is a well, tough one. Well, I think one. it's the, the first one, what I would say is, you know, have you, are you willing to let go and forgive that person, like really completely? Because, I mean, are you really letting go? And, and then you start building new agreements with that person. Those agreements that cannot be like a damage control agreement. No, that's not a good thing. Like if you try to control the damage will happen because then you, you really didn't let go. So if you let go, you build totally new agreements. Like you just, just meeting someone, you're shaking their hands. Hey, I'm, I'm Doug and hi, I'm Christy and, uh, and new agreements. And that's when you can build the trust. Yeah, yeah. Right? Well, what's... And lying, lying, again, lying, you, if you, you have to give 100%, let yourself, the past go, and then you can, you know, build the new trust, and then, because you don't remember about lying, you don't remember about the past. There is nothing, nothing that you can pick on someone, and say, hey, oh, you remember you lied, on this and and you know you said this that way and that's what you did and yeah so again i don't think that many people can do it would i be able to do it no I, and i know in myself it would be very difficult for me uh but there are some people that are successful at doing it, and it really require um impeccable i would say what's i would write the word spirituality i think and you know um and big heart to be able to forgive somebody 100, 100%. Yeah, I think um, one of the things that, you know, it had come up is Anya's very clean. Once, the, once that's broken, it's over. It's done, yeah. she moves on, right? That's just how she, her operating system is conditioned, really. Well, how, how I really protect myself because yeah. I'm, I know that our probably would be not be able to be nice to that person if somebody, and, and again, nobody cheated on me, but um, it was that when I decided relationships go, for whatever reason, you know, I just wanna kind of, you know, create the line on the sand, draw it and say, no more, we done, and I love you, I always gonna be thinking wonderfully about you, but I don't wanna have a further communication. So yeah, and I will answer that question. Gene had a question, which is great, and let me answer. Let me okay. talk to the thing. I think the first thing is, um, if if someone's broken trust and they're lying to you and they've cheated on you, yeah, I think the idea is to move on. It's really, right. you know, there there's core. There's two reasons I say that. The first reason is for your own, you know, for your own cleansiness. The second reason is that if they really want you, they better re you know really put themselves in a position to want to rebuild that relationship and actually build that bridge of trust back because now that they, they've got to rebuild all the trust that's evaporated and it's going to be even harder now and the other thing is you're going to constantly think that they're lying um, because they haven't handled their stuff i think it's really important to completely forgive them completely so that you can move on I know that um, when I had cheated, I got to the point where I didn't even trust myself, <laughs> right? Like literally, oh, I didn't trust funny. that I could ever be faithful. And right. that, that was the hard part is that you've got to be, I think the first person in a relationship, if you're going to build trust, is you have to be able to trust yourself first. Right. And you have to be able to be honest with yourself. A liar may not even be being, being honest with themselves. Right. They, you know, who lies, if a liar doesn't lie to people, they lie to themselves probably as much or more. So if they don't even know what the truth is, then you're gonna get lost in their lies. So Gene had a great one. What was it? Hey George, can we read it to you? Yeah, so go ahead, read it. Michael. Gene said, I've been married for 25 years and been with the same woman for five, for five years before we got married, a total of 30 years. Wow. For us, we found faith is one of the strongholds for our relationship. Would you say faith, trust, and finding curious ways to keep the relationship last a lifetime? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, faith, yeah. I'd say, who, couples usually who pray together, they would stay, stay together. together. Yeah. And, and the faith is it's huge. I mean, if you 
have a faith for God and the same really values, the same things in life like family, you know, love, friends, um, then that's what keep that's the glue what keeps together, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah faith in the same things and stuff and being yeah. Well, I, I think loyalty. I mean, Jean, you've been a, a loyal friend of mine for years, and vice versa. I mean, we're our relationship goes back now. Let's see. I think I met Jean in uh, when I was fifteen years old. I was fifteen, and I'm forty-eight now. So did 33 you years. did you saturate the list with why men cheat? Oh, why men cheat? Bob? So I was into variety, significance, um, so, no, significant security, variety, security. Uh, security is a big one, um, approval, that need for approval, mm -hmm. um, the physical, I mean, when I was younger, oh my God, I, you know, every five minutes you're thinking about sex, I yeah. mean, you know, so, um, let's see, what else? Um, I think the challenge of it, you can get into the challenge of it, and then obviously if you have lots of relationships, they're never deep. So they're, a lot of times can, you don't really ever have bad experiences because you're not engaging in a, a really deep relationship. You, it's shallow. Right. Right? So, it's for fun. Yeah, when I was seeing the different girls, that, you know, when I was a kid, I never had a fight with any of them right. because they all thought I was perfect. So I just agreed with them. So I think for for ladies, why uh, girls mm -hmm. would cheat is more for looking for emotional validation, right? Yeah. They might not getting home, then then just kind of looking for somewhere because that could be a coworker or a friend or just something random that somebody started you know notice you and yeah. say nice things, say hey, how do you look beautiful and. I love your the way you dress and you know and notice those things that they are just unnoticed at home right or yeah. and and I think that's what the women need I mean the, that attention that attention is important you know what I mean and that's I think when women will um, cheat because they are seeking for attention and this is very normal need for all of us seeking for attention for approval for being loved, really, being noticed, being like, say, somebody would say, communicate to you all the wonderful things about you, not just uh, nodding or like, you know, take you for granted, but really communicating. And I think that's when the men comes, it's a, such a hard play because they don't know how to really, com some of, a lot of them, I, you know, they don't know how to communicate. They, they don't know how to say that. Um, the Why wife, are you looking at me? Oh, I'm not. That? I'm just saying. Yeah. I'm just. <laughs> you're not. Don't be scared. Uh, yeah. uh, and and that's the. Um, yeah, that's that's the problem. Uh, yeah. So, so uh, I mean, gentlemen, just really communicate to your ladies how wonderful, how beautiful they are. It doesn't matter how long you've been in the relationship. If that's been six months or six years or thirty years, you know, yeah. it's the same kind of seeing the person that is in your book. You know, every day something different, something new, something cute, something yeah. fun, and uh, and then, gosh, you like you feel like you're dating again, and you've been with the same person for thirty years, but you feel like you're dating again, right? With the yeah. same person over and over, but just finding new things. I think I think that there's never a story, a justification, a reason, or um, anything that actually validates someone actually cheating. Okay, let's go say the, the main one. The main one is uh, the main excuses. The main excuses. What are the main excuses? Oh, is an alcohol involved. Oh, right? yeah, yeah. That, that's, I think that's alcohol. the biggest one. It was an alcohol. Blame it on the alcohol. Blame yeah. on the alcohol. Yeah, it was whatever, Christmas party or something. Yeah. or. Of birthday and just had too many too much to drink and uh, yeah we covered that and, and yeah drugs so drugs I think what else um, well obviously emotional stuff that you were talking yeah, about yeah emotional um, like of uh, yeah validation approval insecurity. attention insecurities yeah. yes 
And we'll, we'll uh, find this. Oh, mistake. Oh, mistake. Oh, a, lot, yeah, a lot of was, people would say, I think it's the biggest I, one. It was like, oh, gosh, I, I made a mistake. I, I, I accidentally had sex with yeah, her. I, I accidentally I, swiped right. Just accidentally. I accidentally, you know, was talking to that person. And like, so, yeah. So, again, uh, nothing happens, you know, uh, accidentally or by mistake. And all the actions are very well thought out. Even you would deny it after, then we all know what's going on right yeah and I mean honestly if you if you're thinking about cheating emotionally mentally whatever then you know move on if that's if that's yeah. your thing I, I don't I'm not a proponent of being in a bad relationship you know yeah. but I also am a hundred percent responsible for the relationship I'm in I don't expect Anya to make me happy I make me happy and fill me up and uh, I get the experience of having Anya in my life. So um, emotionally, I don't make her responsible for my emotions. Right. I feel a responsibility to handle and affect the emotions in my life. So I'm very cognizant of, you know, where my head's at, what what's coming up for me, what emotionally is coming up for me, and um, you know, my own internal management. Um, and I'm I'm not here to make my internal management or you know Anya's problem and one of the things I look at every day and it's actually it actually pissed off a lady uh, about a week ago she got really oh, mad funny. Oh, um, gosh, that was really she funny. was so pissed off um, I was describing to her Anya was about I don't know six seven feet away and I'd mentioned to her what you know about love that I look for new and different ways to experience um, love when I think look at or you know, very grateful for, for Anya. I think what can happen in relationships, we've been together almost nine years, and what happens is people get familiar, and you know, like the iPhone, instead of sitting there, oh, it, it's a little slow, going, wow, this is the most amazing thing ever. I have handheld internet, I have email, I have pictures, I have, Everything that Hundreds of thousands of pictures. I have video. I can shoot video online right now, right in here. I mean, it's absolutely amazing. So I think when I look at Anya and I think about all the different nuances, the, you know, what she says or what she comes up with or new ideas and distinctions or cognitions or just, you know, when things from this rich culture she has from Europe that she brought here and now she's got the mixture of the rich culture of Europe and having traveled the world and gone to China and, and all the languages she speaks and just the influence that she gets to have experiencing a moment with her. I get so much more of an experience from her having been multicultural, multi-language. Her thinking is amazing so I can have fun with like how she thinks, what she's doing, how she looks, just all kinds of different things that I get to take a look at and I get to re-experience love every time I'm around her. So it's to me, but that's me managing my experience of love. And your expectations to your, for yourself. And, and my expectations of myself. I don't place expectations on Anya because I know with expectations comes you know, what could be disappointment. Why set myself up for that? Whatever I get on top of whatever experience of love I have is bonus time. So I, I can take care of me. Right. And I think it's the managing yeah. for like, uh, you know, if you if you think about other people to met to, and you still wanna be in a relationship with your spouse or significant other, is to managing the expectation tells you know communicate what you need and what you want and and you know the, the lot of people they just they've been married for 20 some years and they're really embarrassed about their needs and yeah. you know and because i mean we're all people and we're just getting um i don't know triggered or aroused very different way in so many different ways and some of them they're not acceptable by you know by the general population by our social code and you know being yeah. right and and there's you know so many variety between that. Um, therefore, just communicate, communicate, communicate. I think it's better to take the risk, and even though be rejected, but then be like at least you like relieved that okay you don't have to. 
carry um, the lie or the withhold or whatever it is with you for the rest of your life. Yeah, Doug had an add-on to that, sure. and uh, this is, um, I find it sometimes when starting a new relationship and something happens that it brings up, I guess it says similar stuff about um, being lied to or being cheated on, uh, that's your past dictating your, your present, right. right? So that's something that, you know, you've got to handle and sort out, and because otherwise you end up bringing like lots of people into your relationship, right? You, you drag, it's like dragging this chair, the book, this, this, all this clutter into your relationship and you're trying to have, you know, that person's having a relationship with you. Hopefully they didn't bring all their partners in, but it can get pretty crowded in a relationship where you bring all your past with you. Um, all your baggage. All your baggage. And yeah. then on top of that, every little button, like you talked about buttons, you actually end up either withholding your love or punishing the person because you think they're going to do something that they haven't even done yet. And there's a sequence, an actual sequence, where people will actually attack to avoid being hurt. So what happens is when you anticipate that somebody's going to attack, if someone's going to hurt you, you'll attack first. And, or you're going to sabotage the relationship. Or you sabotage the relationship. And, and I think when, like, so many people that talk about it, they're always running into the same guys and, uh, yeah. you know, and always kind of the relationship is finished with kind of the same ending to it. It's just because you repeating the pattern and, again, those totally different people probably with different backgrounds. And, yeah. But, you know, the common denominator it's you right yeah, they yeah. drone it they kind of mix and sabotaging the relationship massaging the relationship to be just like um, you know the relationship that maybe 10 years ago and you get your ass whooped or yeah. something like that right yeah. and you are one you know get your ass whooped over and over and over again I mean it's it's just crazy so you got to wake up and, until uh, you get until you graduate that class, it's, it's good to not to be relationship. I think when you when you spot the pattern, that what's going on in your life, to not to be in a relationship for probably pretty long time. I know there is an urge, like I want to be in a relationship. I, I love being in a relationship, but it's good to uh, not to be relationship for a long time and look at yourself into. Uh, inside and you know answer all the critical questions like what's going on why I'm creating this why I'm drawing that energy and uh, repeating the same things over and over again with different people yeah I would tend to um, you know the the language that we're most attracted to um, may be the language of somebody who is cheating or in that that uh, that conversation so a lot of what you're being attracted by might be the same things that are actually the ones you're upset by. So how much, you know, the more you can be responsible for what goes on in your life, the more actual control, right. the more responsibility, the, uh, the more knowledge you have is key. Cover oh, what happened to question? the lady who got mad? Okay. All right. So, uh -huh. so at any rate, I started telling, um, telling her how much I love Anya and, and about that concept of, not concept, but the putting myself in the experience of being grateful and noticing new things and resisting the, the familiarity that comes with relationships and having a new experience even after nine years um, to intoxicate, which we have an incredible drug dealer in the back of our mind, the thymus, to be able to experience love both physically and emotionally, as well as my thinking. Um, well, in telling her that, she got totally pissed, and she goes, well, just, just, just move along. And she actually, and it was funny, because the, um, the next day, we went over to a friend's house, that, you know, because we were all at the same place, and asked, like, is she okay, blah, 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 and she said she had no idea why she did what she did um, at all. So she got pissed, she asked me to leave, and then had no idea why she did, um, and then uh, yeah, it was kind of it was kind of fascinating. But uh, what we you know what I said was there was no no upset on my part. I mean, it was right. nothing. I was more curious about. I'm like, this is awesome. She's mad. Let's have a breakthrough here. 
anybody who could get mad at the fact that I love you, right? Right? I like think I think there's a, time, a breakthrough there. That is a time let's for the let's breakthrough. dig right. in. What what's up? Because right. that to a healthy, functional person, I think, is a great thing, right? It'd yeah. be man, that's awesome that you love, love who you with, love right? Breakthroughs. We love breakthroughs. I love breakthroughs. That's how we know so it, if it, know, miracles it, happen. If it does upset you watching other people be in love, that is so freaking awesome. That is the most awesome thing that could ever come up for you. Because guess what? You get to have breakthroughs. Mm. You get to have experiences that are going to, you know, develop you and you have an opportunity to grow. So, you know, thank yourself for giving yourself the, um, the notice that you noticed, that you discovered that it upsets you. Now you get to handle it. It. If you want, maybe you yep. don't. Maybe you just like being unhappy, and some people do, and that's cool. I know plenty of unhappy people. Yeah, they're really good at it. They can do unhappy very well. They are very good at practicing it. They're very good at communicating that they're unhappy, and they do unhappy really well. And I'm pretty. It's pretty awesome. Okay. Yeah, I very just good. don't. I don't like doing have unhappy. Well, hope you enjoyed yep. that show and uh, send us more comments and anything that you would like. We're gonna post it, and so if any things you wanna post, so just go also right below. They, it's okay to post, and we're gonna post that as well. Great conversation. Uh, enjoy. Thanks, guys, for for tuning in to us. Um, we'll put the statistics. We'll find them and put them on the upon on the post. And thanks, Jean Tabola, and Doug, Sandy, and everyone, everyone. else um, who watched. And uh, put whatever comments or questions you have about cheating, we'll cover it in the future. So take care, guys. Thank you. Thank bye you. Bye bye.